Hi, I'm Sigma Ambassador Heather Larkin. I'm here on Long Island in New York and we're going to take our favorite Sigma macro lenses out and about and I'm going to see what we see. We're going to offer some tips and tricks on some macro photography all along the way. So for macro photography, you want to be as early as possible. The dew dries up in the morning, and so if you don't get out by about 8 a.m., it's probably a little too late. So go as, as early as possible in the morning, and you'll find more critters. So roses do this really thick, cool thing uh, along the edge of the leaf called gutation. And what happens is the rose um, tries to get rid of excess water. And it does this by taking it through the leaves and sticking it at the ends of the leaves. And so if you walk really like slow and really, really close, you can see the, um, the, at the end of each leaf. And sometimes the whole thing will be ringed in these little droplets. And it's, it's really amazing. And it only happens in the morning. So you have to get out here really early to see it. So for macro photography, you need to walk really, really slow. That's one of the things that I tell people most often is if you're not seeing anything interesting, you're moving too fast. And so all of these have a bunch of dew all over them. I'm looking for a spider, but I don't see any yet. But I am seeing a whole bunch of caterpillar poops. So there's got to be some caterpillars around here someplace. You see all these those dots in there. That's caterpillar poop. So where are the caterpillars? We will find them. Hey, look, there's some more poop. Wow. <laughs> white this time. <laughs> you want white poop? You got brown poop? You want caterpillar poop? You want bird poop? We got it. I love how there's water droplets stuck in this. There we go. I like to photograph bees from the side because if you photograph them top down, all you get in focus is their wings along their back. And if you go from the side, it's easier to get all their little legs in focus. Oh, cool, check this out. Okay, so this is a crab spider. And these guys like to sit there and wait with their arms up until anything flies by and then they grab them. So here's another example of gutation. So this plant apparently does it on its new leaves as well. So you can see all the little dew drops right along the edges of the petals on all of its new leaves. And if you just sit in one place long enough, you'll start to notice all kinds of interesting things that you can take pictures of. I just spotted some uh, dew drops in the grass and they're suspended in nothing, which means it's a spider web. So I love doing exactly this, shooting right into the depths of the grass because the dew stands out really well. So right now I'm at 1 200th at f2.8. And I wiggle a lot, so I have to shoot a bunch of these. Otherwise, they are out of focus because I wiggle. This is a good example of what happens when you don't have gutation. The water just sits on top of the leaves like this and makes it actually really hard to photograph because all you get is the reflection. I totally know it's weird to be excited about wet grass, but if you look at all of the, the dew drops all over the, the grass, it's quite lovely. How the light comes through here and lights up all of these, they shine and all of the dew drops are at the tops, the tippy tops of each of the big grass blades. So if you shoot those from the side, you can see them really well. So I have my focus limiter set on my lens so that it only focuses on what's close to me instead of trying to focus on everything. It's really important when you're shooting things like this where the lens, the camera is going to want to focus on 
everything in the background unless you have that focus limiter on to um, shorten it up and tell it you only want it focused on what's close to you. So for me, macro is not only about finding critters and subjects to shoot, but also texture and light. And this plant is a great example of it. You see how the light is coming through it. And you have about 80 different colors here. So we've got a whole bunch of burgundy and there's some lime and there's some orange in here. And I, I really like that play of light and texture. It's not always about bugs. I mean, when you're six feet tall, sometimes you have to get really short. These ferns look painted. They're like changing color for the, the season and they just look like somebody took a paintbrush to them. Heather found a mushroom. Oh look, a little mushroom. Look at that cute little thing. It's like little red and there are all these little things all over it. It's got a bunch of dirt. I'll knock all that off of there. See these tiny little things? It's actually a species of fern. Hard to believe that they're that little, but it is. Oh, he jumped. There's a cricket right in here. You see him right there? There's a little ant on the side of this flower. Ah, this is pretty neat. The petals of this flower um, are translucent and there's dew on the tops of them. The light shining through them, I can see the dew drops through the leaves or the, through the petals. Looks pretty neat. Spider is one of the orb weaver species. They're the most varied in body shape and size of any spiders. And so you can tell they're orb weavers by how they hang upside down in the webs. And the webs are often large and round shaped. Ooh. These are some really pretty blue purple flowers. They have some like purple veins in the center and the stamen sticks out a little bit, which will make some for a really amazing side shot with all of the different color variations in there. There we go. So remember what I said about macro not being all about critters all the time? hydrangeas, dried hydrangea leaves, like the petals and the flowers, when they dry, they tend to dry out and fall off and form these like little lacy bits, which makes for amazing texture. I think I love it extra because all of the color behind it is pink and not green. All the little dewdrops are just held in between all of these tiny little leaves and they just sit right on top of there. Groundsel tree. That's what that is. Like this app that tells me what it is. And uh, you just point the camera at it and it pops up with the name of what you're looking at. I don't think we have these where I live. This is my favorite lens for macro photography because it has amazing color and it, because it's a macro lens, it has a great uh, minimum focus distance. Like I can get the lens like that far away from whatever it is that I'm taking a picture of and it allows me to get right in there. And um, everything is always super duper sharp because it's an art lens. Art is fantastic. And uh, I just, all around, it's super easy to use at all times. Mm -hmm. 
So earlier we were out with the 70 millimeter macro. Now we have the 105. We're on the boardwalk at Fire Island and we're gonna go towards the lighthouse and see what we see. There's some berries here that are pretty interesting. And the leaves are changing, so they look, again, sort of painted. Woolly beach heather, it is. How about that? So with the 105, I don't have to get as close to what I'm taking pictures of as the 70, which I like a lot. So I know it's weird, but there's this pine cone here on the beach that has some of the, uh, the little uh, scales worn away by the wind and the sand, and it has a really cool texture. It looks almost furry. There's this one, and this, see it? Look at all of these little, they almost look like feathers. Oh, this is actually super cool because the sand actually stays in the pine cone. I can see each grain of sand in there. I like that, that's actually super neat. asleep. I think the battery's really sick. So this is a ruby crowned kinglet and you can see the ruby crown on his little head. He's like just like curled up in there. He's through with us. So I don't actually know what these are, but they're really pretty color. Oh, this little blue and how it's gradated in there. So I thought I'd take some pictures of that. Oh my gosh, I can see every little grain of sand. That is amazing. I'm just gonna take pictures of sand. So because it's pretty overcast today, I'm looking slightly more for texture than I am lighting. And so things like this where you can see a whole bunch of different spots and colors all over that is what's catching my eye today. I want some dang bubbles, but I don't want my shoes to smell like an aquarium. Oh. Woo! <laughs> well, well, too late. There it is. All right, now we're going. There's a crab. Well, part of a crab. Crab bits, but still interesting. I like all the textures on the claw here. So all in all, I think the 105 macro is probably a great choice for the beach considering that it's weather sealed and I almost threw it in the ocean. I didn't, but all we had to contend with was the sea spray, which is perfect. It was great in terms of distance and we found a whole lot of cool things. 